Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name is Andy. And I'm Drew. This is our little 10 minute window to the rest of the world and today is a special night because once again I am being surprised by me. With uh, five wonderfully horrible sci-fi sci -fi you need to see before you die. die. Now I realize that what I bring to this show is you bring the horror, I bring the sci-fi. Yeah. First one on our list is actually the original of a remake that I mentioned the last time, I had to bring it in. Rollerball! Come on, watch now, you got the ball! Next time around, we defend! 1975. Five. James Caan, the original version, and it's just roller derby gone wrong. It's hilariously bad. How can you say no to this cinematic genius? Yeah, that's, um... Something. The best part is like the, the... The end where the credits rolled at the end. You can't mess with this. This is hilarious. Okay. Well, actually, they... Ironically, they did mess with it. And they didn't do much better. This next one is one that I know that Andy loves more than anything else. Johnny Mnemonic! Yeah. And he loves it so much that... <laughs> I haven't even... The shrink wrap is still on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look how much it cost oh, me to yeah. buy that thing. Like, how much was that? See, this is an embarrassment, even to movie stop. <laughs> Dollar three ninety nine. How can you go wrong? You put your money on the counter and you take that home. <laughs> That's how you go wrong with that. When the counter approaches zero, click on three frames off the TV. Any three, they'll meld with the data, and I won't know what they are. That's a download code. You get a hard copy. You fax one copy to your connection on the other side. When I get there, we feed in the code and download. Understand? Upload begins when you press here. Hit me. This is a movie where Keanu Reeves is a mnemonic courier. And what he does is his brain has a hard drive in it. And whenever anybody has any secrets that they want to have transported, they basically, he uploads it into his brain. Well, this time... They gotta store something up there. Yeah, they put too much in and his brain is gonna die if he doesn't get it out. But it's got, like, Henry Rollins in this movie. Ice T's in this movie. These are the high points. Well, Dolph Lundgren! Okay, Exhibit A, the plastic is still on it. I'm glad you love that movie so much. It's certainly... <laughs> Awful enough to check out. And it's hilariously funny because, you know, especially the part... But it's not supposed to be. That's the, that's the funny part. I, I don't even have to, like, rag on that film. It rags on itself. It's convenient that way. A little addition to our ring here. We should point out that Keanu Reeves is not really that bad of an actor, but he does got a bad reputation of being bad. Yeah, he's got that typecasted kind of stoner thing going on. Yeah, I mean, he was excellent in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Perfect Fairing. role. I mean, born to play that part. L little did I know, the director told me he was shooting a documentary. Ever it's since then, it's been downhill. No, I mean, I, I mean, he's given us some good quotes, you know. I need guns. That's a good one. Whoa. Whoa. And then there was um, a Johnny Mnemonic. Whoa. <laughs> and the Matrix Reloaded. Whoa. Let's be, let's be kind to him. Yeah, let's be kind to him. And a side note, serious note, if you want to see Keanu Reeves at his best acting, is this little independent film called The Prince of Pennsylvania. I believe it's his first feature-length film. I think so, too. He's really good in it. And this is no joke. It's that. He's actually really good yeah. in that movie. Now, we have seen good movies, we've seen bad movies, and we've seen rip-offs of bad movies. Oh Ladies God, and gentlemen, we here we go. Future Sport. You know, from the future, and it's a sport, so they call it FUTURE SPORT! I don't get it, what's it about? With a special guest appearance by Wesley Snipes. He's the executive producer. But it's still a guest appearance by Wesley Snipes! Vanessa Williams? Yep. Dean Kane? 
Yep. The hell? And a special guest appearance by Wesley Snipes. Oh, please tell me you didn't watch this. Yes, I did. Why? <laughs> because I'm a glutton for punishment. This... I guess you guys are too if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is about uh, a sport of the future that apparently has covers the world now. And okay, is what is the sport? I don't. It's called future sport. They that's what they call it. They call the sport future sport. They don't call it basketball or skateboarding. They call it future sport. Well, that's... Wouldn't them be the present sport? I, I know, it but it's 20... future sport in the future, so everybody it knows that. Twenty twenty five. I know, but everybody in the future needs to know they're in the future, so that's why they call it future sport. That's pretty deep. <laughs> it's deep in something. Now this next movie, here comes one of my favorites. A guilty pleasure, if you will. Oh gosh. Brace yourself, people. The Last Starfighter. Alex didn't find his dream. Hey, look out! Oh dear. His dream found him. Where are we? Welcome to Rylos, my boy. A world on the brink of destruction. The Last Starfighter. This movie is awesome! This is the first film that they tried to use completely digital special effects with not a single model or anything else like that. Now I have railed against CGI for a long time, yeah. but you got to at least appreciate the effort that they went into to make this movie. And it's a time capsule of a movie because at oh, yeah. the time it was groundbreaking and yeah. it's still watchable to this day mm -hmm. even in its awful form because it's a good movie. Yeah. This was directed by yeah. Nick Castle. Nick Castle. We did all know this. who Nick Castle is. It's definitely a, an eighties movie. It was pretty smart for the time because mm -hmm. I, I specifically remember the aliens when they were talking to him and you couldn't understand the language and they put the little oh, translator yeah. thing on him. Oh yeah. And then all, all of a sudden he could understand all of the aliens. That was they, a cool thing that they did. He's recruited by the Star League to fight against Zor and the Kodan Armada. Because Buzz Lightyear was nowhere to be found yet. Yeah, you know what happens. They did the effects on, of this movie on a Cray supercomputer. And just to give you an idea as to what kind of computer the Cray supercomputer was, it was used by the Department of Defense. Basically, it was like the Whopper from War Games. It's, it's just one of those movies you have to see at least once. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the piece de resistance, the coup de grace, Starship Troopers. Okay, once again, he's pulled through in the end. This movie is great. Four. But in the future, the greatest threat to our survival will not be man at all. Everyone fights, no one quits. Hey, you kill anything that has more than two legs, you get me? We get you, sir! He's coming! This movie had a wonderful play on uh, the propaganda, propaganda films. film. Thank you of the 1940s, 1940s yeah, 40s, and yes, all and that they, stuff. And they played in the future, and they're fighting giant bugs. How can you like <laughs> get excited about that? It's directed by Paul Verhoeven. Oh yeah, he, Robocop, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, and we'll forgive him for the Psycho remake and Hollow Man. It's got Casper Van Dien. It's got Denise Richards. Wait. Okay. And it's even got Doogie Howser in this. Yeah, hands. This is actually, I think, probably one of the last big sci-fi movies of the 1990s. They released it rated R, and it was still good. It's awesome, but it fits in this episode. It does. I gotta borrow this. He's gonna borrow it. My name's Andy. I'm Drew. Good night.